The headlines, the issues impacting you and your family. This Week in Cincinnati on 9 on Your Side. Good morning and welcome to This Week in Cincinnati. I'm Kristen Hartman. First today, Republican Congressman Warren Davidson as he runs for re-election. Congressman Davidson represents Ohio's 8th district that includes Butler County along with Preble, Dark, Miami and Clark counties and part of Mercer County. Davidson was first elected to Congress in 2016 to complete House Speaker John Boehner's term when he decided to retire. Davidson went to West Point and served 12 years in the Army. After leaving the service, he went into business. His opponent in November is Democrat Dr. Vanessa Enoch. We have also invited her to join us on This Week in Cincinnati as the fall campaign season begins in earnest. Congressman Davidson, we want to thank you for joining us. And I'm going to open with a really broad question. How's Washington? Uh, probably less divided than the news coverage, but it, you know, there's still a lot of work left to be done based off what everyone promised to get done. Okay, presidential party politics always affect the party. So my question for you is how would you grade President Trump at this juncture? You know, if you look at the results, start with the economy. You look at what President Trump campaigned on, or frankly most Republicans campaigned on in 2016, is restoring a 3% growth rate to the economy. Mm -hmm. You know, people said that's not possible. We're in this new era where the economy's be going to grow at 1.5%. And the reality is they thought that was crazy in an eight-year term, let alone a four-year term. One and a half years into the, into the cycle, uh, the economy's growing north of 3% steadily. Um, wages are going up. Uh, if you look at if you look at uh, hiring, it's going up. Wa uh, not just wages, but business investments going up. Mm -hmm. And tax reform was a huge part of that. Uh, companies like, you know, like Apple and Amazon and all these big corporations, but lots of small companies too. People that had capital, they didn't just forget to make those investments under the previous administration. They're making those investments now because the policy changes are different and the demand for the growth is there. Some would argue that the economy has getting be been getting better and better and better over the last number of years, even before President Trump took office. It was slow and steady. I mean, it was at a 1.5% growth rate. It was a long, sustained, but very slow growth rate. And, and so now, uh, what we, frankly, President Obama is the only president in the modern era to not have a 3% growth rate. He didn't, you know, rarely had a 2% growth rate. Annualized, he never hit it. So we are now growing at more than double the rate of growth. And why is that important? Well, it, it's what puts, you know, wages were stagnant on, at that 1.5% mm -hmm. growth rate. So if you're going to see more take-home pay, you have to have enough pressure for the economy to grow, to create scarcity in the workforce, creates new hiring. You put new investment in, and, uh, and that creates its own jobs. Uh, President Obama knew to try that when he came up with the phrase shovel-ready jobs. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that was happening was government stimulus. Government stimulus wasn't driving private sector demand. And when you look at the regulatory reform and tax reform that Republicans, including our president, supported, um, it is noticeably having an impact on the economy. Apart and aside from the economy, what policy issues do you agree with the president on? Well, if you look at in uh, the 2016 election, ISIS was top of mind. You know, the threat of terror was huge. And uh, ISIS controlled a, a, a very large amount of territory in, uh, from Syria to Iraq, all through that uh, Middle Eastern region. And people thought, you know, well, you know, this is rhetoric. We have to destroy ISIS. Today, I mean, they're almost extinct. I mean, just a tiny fraction. They don't control any territory to speak of. Uh, and while they still have some funds and some people that are, they're deep underground and mm -hmm. they're no longer an influence. You look at um, the status quo there, I mean, that has been phenomenally successful and talked about far too little. Uh, if you look at North Korea, uh, for example, when we uh, engaged in past rhetoric, you know, you had these empty promises by North Korea. Uh, people were concerned for a little while about where is the president headed with North Korea. Since then, we've had the Singapore summit. We've had progress in the negotiations. Still a lot left to be done there, but frankly, the amount of progress we've made with North Korea I think gives some people genuine hope that we might see the Korean Peninsula achieve what, uh, what East and West Germany achieved, is perhaps there would be a point in the future, whether they completely reunify or they just engage in civil relationships again, uh, where truly people's lives could be transformed there because we have a peace process in place. Do you have any points of disagreement with the president? Well, you know, I certainly couldn't get away with uh, his brand and certainly some of the things he says or how he says them. 
you know, he campaigned as this brash New Yorker guy. You know, and, uh, you know, the way he says things sometimes doesn't always go over well here in Ohio. Uh, but I think it's important when you think about the president to judge him more on what he does and less on what he says. The deeds have produced great results. Uh, the words sometimes give people a little pause. And, uh, you know, we're rooting for, the, we're rooting for a little more uh, Ohio values on some of the, the language. But the results have been tremendous. Okay. We are recording this interview one day after uh, the Manafort and Cohen cases really blew up on the news. Uh, how does that impact you going into the November elections? Well, I don't know about the election process, but look, mm -hmm. you know, if you go back to the last election, you know, the, the Trump rallies in particular, there were all these chants, lock her up, lock her up, talking about uh, Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for some people, I think, sure, genuinely, they didn't like Hillary Clinton. But what they especially didn't like was the idea that anyone would be above the law, that there'd be one standard for the regular people and, one, and a different standard for the political class. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that comes to a head here is, is, was it really about a person, Hillary Clinton? Or was it really about the principle that no one's above the law, that you can't say that you have justice and treat one person different than the other person? And, and uh, you know, Manafort, if he committed a crime, he's guilty. The, the key thing, the, and he's, he's pled guilty to things. Cohen pled guilty to some things, too. And, and how does that impact the president and then trickle down to candidates such as yourself? Well, so the president hasn't been charged with anything mm -hmm. currently, and so when you look at what would he be charged of? Right now, uh, the most uh, connected to him is, uh, you know, settlements paid to uh, Stormy Daniels or whatever via his lawyer, uh, Cohen. And paying the settlement isn't necessarily uh, uncommon, uh, maybe not uncommon at all for Trump. I don't know. Hmm. But the, the uh, context but in which it occurred, that's there. That's not the same as there was collusion with Russia, which is what everyone's spent uh, so much energy on. And when I'm out talking with people, which is really what we're doing through here in August, is going and talking to people, there are a handful of people that are concerned about that. What they're more concerned about is, you know, when are we going to get the closure on this? Is, is there a there there or is there not? How much money is this costing us? Let's get on with governing the country. And I think a lot of people have come to see all of it, whether it related to Trump or whether it related to Hillary Clinton, from a completely partisan lens. And uh, I think that's a challenge because we want it to be where facts matter and, uh, you know, justice is in the Justice Department. I think that's, uh, that's something that is broadly embraced and people are kind of sick of the rhetoric. So they just want justice to be served and let's get on with governing the country. Okay, justice and, and wherever that might lead? I think for most people, wherever that might lead, I think there are some people that were there was no matter what happened, the Hillary Clinton was, uh, was never wrong. And for some people, no matter what happened, Donald Trump will never be wrong. So, you know, we'll see if we can get to the point where it really is facts matter. Uh, but the reality is we've spent, we spent a lot of money, we spent a lot of time, and people are looking for resolution. They really voted in the election not to continue a resistance movement. Uh, they wanted to see people govern. And I, I think of the Indian parable. Uh, you know, with two wolves, a good wolf and a bad wolf fighting, and the, the kid asks his grandpa which wolf will win, and the grandpa responds with wisdom, the one you feed. And so when you think about the election, are we going to feed the resistance wolf, which is, you know, resist, you know, obstruct, delay, uh, or are we going to feed the let's govern America and make America great again wolf? And, and uh, I think that the reality is, is we, have to, we have to govern the country. Because if the election turns into a proxy on, uh, on resistance, well, then there'll be a new version of resistance coined on the other side. So I think it's very important that people say, no, we go to the ballot box because we want to see people govern the country. All right. We are not done with the conversation, but we do have to take a break. So we will get into some more personal things right after the break. Sure. We'll be right back. The people, the headlines, the issues impacting you, all on This Week in Cincinnati on 9 in Your Side.